Welcome to the Millionaire Maker Show, a podcast helping online coaches monetize their life's work and scale their businesses to create more time, more money, more freedom, and more impact. Now, with over 20 years of business building, coaching, and consulting experience, here's your host, author, speaker, and creator of the Millionaire Maker Coaching Funnel, Lindsay Anderson. Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome to this episode of the Millionaire Maker Show. I am your host, Lindsay Anderson. And if you are a coach, consultant, or expert looking to sell more programs, courses, or memberships, you are in the right place. That's exactly what we do right here on the Millionaire Maker Show. Now, today's episode I'm really excited about because I'm interviewing one of my very first business coaches, Mr. Jim Palmer. Now, Jim mentions in this episode, sadly, that he is on the exit ramp of his business and really finishing up and putting an exclamation point at the back end of a truly successful coaching career. And it's sad to hear because Jim had a really big impact on me. When I first attended his event over a decade ago, I was over $100,000 in tax debt. I had employees. I had been trying to run this business and really hadn't, you know, cracked the code on how to make it not be so painful or so hard all of the time. And I ran into Jim at a very pivotal point in my life and business and went to a live event of his. At that live event, I laid down over $50,000 for a year-long coaching program. It was the first time I had ever made a significant investment in a coach. And I'm here to tell you, it paid off, okay? Not only that $50,000 came back to me 20-fold and still relationships that I made back then are still paying off. Okay, but it made such a profound impact on me that every time that I have a problem in life or in business, I will always reach out to a coach or consultant to give me the answers to to the problem. We've done this in parenting. I've taken plenty of parenting classes. I do this with my health. I do this in business. I don't have the time to be an expert at something and the way that I want things handled, health, wealth, and relationships is in a most expedient, straightforward way as possible. And so I understand and live my life that way that if I have a problem, I will immediately go to a coach and consultant. That happens business-wide, that happens life-wide, that happens health-wide. And you know, Jim really taught me that. I had never really significantly invested in something like that. And I did. I took myself seriously. I was able to get his strategies, implement those into my business and be off and running faster than I ever would have before. So I'm excited to interview Jim on this podcast. It was so great reconnecting with him. And on this episode, I, we really dive into, Hey Jim, what have been your best strategic moves in growing this business. Now, Jim is a, he owns multiple online businesses. He is the true example of having more time, more money, more freedom, and more impact. He travels around the country, either in his yacht or in his RV, handling coaching calls that way. And he's built a, he has systems in his business where he's been able to be consistent on his podcast for over 500 episodes. He's consistently posting on social media. And this mix, this marketing washing machine that Jim has set up really has allowed him to live a really amazing life. And now as he's exiting his coaching business to really reap all of the rewards for all of his hard work that he wasn't already reaping, like he was reaping it already at the time. Who doesn't want to do coaching calls from their yacht? You know, if you're a yacht kind of person. So It's a great interview. I nail him down on strategy. I nail him down on what he wishes he would have known when he started. And there's just very rarely that you're going to be able to catch an interview with two experts like Jim and I, decades of experience in online marketing and sales. And we really get to the bottom of what this whole game is about, this online, building your online business game, you know? So you're going to love this episode. Make sure you tune in. Now, if you are a coach, consultant, or expert looking to scale your online business and you want help with the strategies and the systems and the sales to do that, make sure you head over to lindsayacom slash coaching. Fill out an application to chat with me. 
There are so many people who are at a specific place in their online business that implementing some tried and true strategies, getting some systems in place for consistency and to be able to iterate and improve can really take your business to the next level. That call will allow us to explore that, see where you're at, give you some insight so you can actually grow this business. So let's hop into today's episode with Jim and I. This is not one that you're going to want to miss. Hey, everybody. Welcome to this episode of the Millionaire Maker Show. Today is a really, really special show because I'm interviewing one of my very first business coaches, someone who really introduced the world of coaching to me and how to market yourself as a professional coach with authority, knowing how to sell, creating amazing events, building a community. It was really, this was a decade ago that I met this gentleman and he's had a huge impact on how I've ran my coaching business. And I'm so excited to have him here on the show today, Mr. Jim Palmer. Welcome to the show, Jim. 10 years, Lindsay, is it possible it's been that long? Mm, oh my gosh. Right? Yeah, yes. one, of, one of my dream business academy events, which is part and parcel of why we got together and what we're talking about today. I mean, that is the reason for doing live events because that's a yeah. lot of work. Jim, how long have you, tell, actually, why don't you tell everybody, I'll let you take the stage for just a second here. Tell everybody a little bit about like what your specialty is, what you do, how long you've been doing it. What, what's up with Jim Palmer? Tell us. It's interesting because uh, I am now like 21 or 22 years um, and it's not real public, so I'm not going to say too much about it, but I, let's just say the exit ramp for Captain Jim is like coming into view, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Never thought that would happen, right? But um, yeah, I started in 2001, my first business. And then about three or four years later, that was doing pretty well. And I started two, three, four, five, I think I had six total. And in 2000, and that all happened fairly rapidly, Lindsay. And then in 2009, some people started asking me, just as Dan Kennedy spoke from the stage, if people started asking you, how are you doing that? You may have a coaching program. It was the furthest thing from my mind. If you, if somebody said, when I started business, what are you going to do? I'm like, I'm going to do newsletters and marketing. What about being a coach? No business being a coach. But then you get this experience. And um, I know you've coached thousands of people yourself. And Lindsay, one of the things I know with, with the hindsight that I have that you might not even have because you have no gray yet. So I'm, I'm a little older than you. But I look back and I go, all those things that I went through, good, bad, the ugly, the, the challenges, all that, that's what goes into making us a good coach, right? It's not just that I know how to do this. There's a lot of people say, oh, I know how to do this. But it's, it's all the other stuff. I recognize that now, having been coaching for 13 or 14 years. But when I started, I thought it was all about the strategy and things like that. This works. Oh, you're going to try that. Try some direct mail. Do this. You know, then we get into paid ads. So. I don't want to, I don't want to give you a half an hour answer here, but you, you pulled the string, you got me going, but that's, sure. that's what really got me into coaching is people started asking. And then it turns out I liked it. And then it turns out I'm good at it. And I really built my main business to where today I still have the newsletters, my printing business and by helping people do books and stuff. That's kind of on what, what I might call autopilot. But for the last seven years, I've worked three days a week coaching entrepreneurs um, and five years, for, I did it from my boat and I'll be doing it for one more year from my motor home soon. Yeah. I mean, you tell a story. I know I've heard the story from you several times, but back to what you were saying, like for me, the way that I put it is, listen, I have gotten here and I've cried a lot of tears and I've taken a lot of wrong turns. And so if you coach with me, I can prevent you from making those same mistakes that I have made. And I know that your story, I mean, you tell a story about stocking shelves at Target, right? Yes. Oh, gosh, you got a good memory. Um, you know, when I became an entrepreneur, the way I describe it from the stage is for almost a year and a half, I was an unemployed loser because I lost my job. And then I became an entrepreneur, which instantly, you know, made me feel great. But I had no revenue. All I said was, I'm an entrepreneur. and I got business cards from Vistaprint. Well, <laughs> I had four hungry teenagers at home, so um, I got to figure out what do I do? So I got a job stocking shelves at Target overnight. 
I figured I could live on five hours of sleep or so for a while. I was, you know, what was I, 41? It's a long time ago. And um, and then I, I think my shift ended at like 9 or 10 a.m., go home, put my big boy clothes on, go start knocking on doors, calling on businesses, going to chamber events and all this and that. Um, occasionally Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, going to, uh, networking events, just trying to grow, fall into bed, get up at three o'clock in the morning and do that. I did that for almost a year and a half until I kept asking them to reduce my hours when I started getting clients. Then they said, Jim, you got to decide you're either working for target or doing that thing on your own. Easy decision. See ya. But that, but you know, you, you do what you need to do, Lindsay, right? I mean, yes. what yes. it's. It's it is that whatever it takes attitude. That's usually I'm sure you can agree with this. That's usually the missing ingredient. When you look at somebody's doing okay, and you look at a you know the smaller portion of people who are doing really really well, that smaller group has all, some things going for it. But they were they're willing to do whatever it takes. And along those lines, Jim, you are the one who taught me this. You were my very first really substantial investment in a coach, and it's because you taught me it's it's the shortcut right so can you can you expound on that the the power of investing in coaching and why you tell the story about a credit card that i'm going to set you up for right now wow yeah my god your memory is impeccable but you know it's impact on me a decade ago what can i say it is interesting Lindsay, because like many of my clients if i mentioned you could have a coaching program you definitely resisted you did not see yourself as a coach my daughter jessica didn't see herself as a coach she runs some private high-end stuff a lot of people don't. Um, but the thing is, um, what what did you ask me? Because I got off track. Yeah, about investing in coaches. Oh. Like, yeah, you tell the story about credit cards. Like, I remember watching this video at your at your events where where it's like you you kind of like you got to double down on yourself and believe in yourself and invest in yourself. That's right. You know, um, some people say I'm going to give this business thing a try, but I'm going to give it a year. I'm willing to invest. I think I got fourteen thousand two hundred eighty-two dollars in savings. I'm willing to put that in. I'll, but I'm not willing to risk this. In other words, some people who start when they're in maybe chapter two of their life, whether they're thirty or forty or whatever, they're willing to try it, but they're not going to put their current lifestyle at risk, which is total BS. It's that whole going all in. So one of the things I tell people is, you know, I I really racked up over a, close to one hundred fifty thousand dollars in credit card debt keeping my family afloat, growing my business in the early years. And, you know, I had this little thing with cancer, so I had some medical bills, all that different stuff. But I, I just, if I needed money on Friday, man, I just put a card through my, that I had the terminal on my desk in the days, whoosh, swipe a card and put money into my account. I knew I was going to be successful. I just didn't know when, Lindsay. I knew as soon as I start growing, I'll pay off that debt. So I'm going to keep betting on myself. I didn't get to the point, oh my God, I'm at 150000 of credit card debt, which I hated. I mean, I'm the generation, you don't have credit card debt, but yet whatever it takes, I'm going to build my business. And so when somebody says, I'm not going to do this, one of the other examples I use is a lot of times you hear today, oh, the work-life balance, that type of thing. I totally agree. You know, you got to have some balance in your life. But one of the stories I tell people is, suppose it's a Thursday night, it's been a long week already, you're ready to go watch your your son or daughter in some kind of an after-school event or whatever, and the phone rings, and it's a, it's a prospective client that would be a real game changer for your business, and you've been nurturing this relationship. And he says, uh, hey, Jim, it's, it's Bill. Yeah, believe it or not, I'm, I'm, I'm in your town. I didn't let you know early because I was going to fly in in the morning, have a meeting and fly out. Well, they just canceled my damn flight. So I got to stay in a hotel. Do you want to have dinner, get together and tell me what you'd like to do with our company? What are you going to do? You know what I mean? That's, yeah. Those are some of the decisions you have to make. When I started writing books, and I've written now seven books, not counting the, the eBooks and all the rest of it, but um, I was already working very hard, but what I did is I figured out if I get up even 90 minutes earlier, like 4 or 4.30 in the morning, and I write from, say, 4.30 to 6 a.m., no interruptions every day, because about 6 a.m., I'd hear the shower upstairs and noise, but for an hour and a half, for about 30 to 60 days, I'd get up at 4.30 and I'd write. So that t- So for me, writing books, it didn't come out of family time or dinner time or my work time or whatever else I was doing, it came out of my time. 
Yes. So there's decisions you you have to make. There's financial decisions. There's time commitments. It's that expression: Are you willing to do these things for a period of time that others aren't willing to do? So you can then that. I mean, all these things we're talking about are how I've been able to work three days a week for the last seven years. Now going on eight years. It's because I was willing to do that for 12 years, <laughs> 12 years. Like when you explain to people, like you live a really unique lifestyle. You were really able to capitalize on all of the work you've done to live a pretty awesome lifestyle over the past seven years, doing whatever you want. Share, share yeah, with us it, what you've been doing for the last in 2017. Seven years. In 2016, Stephanie came home. She'd been in a pretty stressful job. She says, I'm leaving my job. I said, good for you. Um, and she said, we're going to go on a big adventure. I had no idea what she, and she didn't know either, but we needed to disrupt our life. The expression that is in our, our favorite book now on the coffee table about our five-year adventure was we traded, um, reliability and predictability for adventurous and exciting. So got rid of the home. I mean, we did everything like we're supposed to raise the kids, went to involved in PTA and all had all our life insurance. We did everything by the book. And then we threw it all out the window. And, and at a, not a critical time, but a, not, a, we were well past the hump. We had achieved debt. We were debt-free and all this and that, but we sold our house, which is our biggest asset. We had it for almost 30 years. We sold one of our cars. We sold the boat we had then, and we bought a 50 foot boat, which I've never driven a 50 foot boat. There's a picture of it. As you can see it, but I drove a 50 foot boat in the friggin' ocean. My first trip up to Rhode Island to see my daughter, Jessica. <laughs> I've never been in the ocean other than a ferry to Martha's Vineyard when I was 12 years old. <laughs> but we just did this. We were going to do it for a year and then come back to reality and settle down. And then, Lindsay, this, this bug of exploring and wandering bit us hard. Three months in, we knew we wouldn't stop. So when we got back to kind of what I call our home port, we we started getting rid of, we donated a lot of furniture to some women's charities that we support like women at risk <laughs> who are getting new homes set up and so we we gave our living room set away we did this we did a whole bunch of stuff and we shrunk down from this massive storage unit because we only thought we'd be a year and then we'd need our stuff again and we got down to a 10 by 15 which had just our our most precious mementos antique kitchen table obviously pictures clothes that stuff so that the stuff you're not going to get rid of and we got down to that tiny storage unit and we were, we lived and worked. I worked on that boat for five years. We did 12,458 miles up and down the coast five times. Last time we went to the Keys, which was 1300 miles down, wow. down there. And then, um, and on the way back, we, we were, it was diesel fuel was six bucks a gallon. And I got one mile to the gallon in my beautiful boat. So, but we did that and we figured it out. Yeah. And um, it was a lot like being an entrepreneur. We definitely, we definitely put ourselves at risk, but we, we just love the adventure and the exploration. So that the other expression now that we have, and we now put it on the wall of our, of our motor home was um, we chose to live with less so we can experience more. That's our current life right now. I love that, Jim. Thank you so much for that. And and putting all that work, building a strong foundation for your coaching business really gave you the flexibility and the ability to to do, to have a life that that you it wanted. Did. You know, it's interesting. I know you, with your impeccable memory, you know this story as well. But when we left that first year to go south to Florida the first time, I, I worked Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So we can travel Friday through Monday. Well, there was a Monday and we pulled into, it was not that far. It was Annapolis, Maryland. I think it was our first or second day of travel. And we're the boat, our boat is on anchor and we put our dinghy in the water and we, we motored over to this restaurant. And so, but it's like October, so it's not busy on a Monday. And we had a nice meal and we're dinghying back to our boat. And I said, there's our beautiful boat. And I said, and Steph goes, what's the matter? I said, I feel so friggin' guilty everybody's working except us. We're in our dinghy going to our boat and we're going to go further south. It felt really weird. I'm telling you, mindset never, the, the, the little gremlins never stop attacking you. And I had to remind myself, we have worked very, very hard to get to this point. We're entitled to enjoy it and not feel bad for it. That's a little sidebar mindset thing. Yeah. I mean, I know, and I know you're <laughs> really big on mindset. In fact, let's talk about that a little bit. Like, can you expound a little bit on your philosophies around how essential mindset is when it go comes to growing your coaching business? 
it's everything, honestly. It's growing any business, but especially a coaching business. Lindsay, you know about imposter syndrome and, and some of the other things. The one thing, and I've helped a lot of people get into the coaching business, and imposter syndrome just rears its ugly. Because, well, who am I? I never went to coaching school. How am I charging people, you know, whatever I'm charging them for my advice? It feels really weird. Um, one of my, you'll always be, you know, one of my favorites and success stories and all that, but there's somebody who's a little bit more current who, um, does high end sales training and he is working with me on a semi-private basis to help him increase his prices, which seems odd because he's a high end sales trainer, but I'm helping him. So he came to me and he said, yeah, I've got a, a 60 day program and I get 7,500 hours for it. He kind of smiled like the Cheshire cat. Well, it is pretty good. I mean, a lot of people would smile and go, pretty, pretty good. good for yeah. 60 days. And I told him, what, what I asked him, what results do your clients get? And again, he, with a big smile, I helped one guy do this, like massive, blah, blah, blah. I said, man, you're, you're way too cheap. Oh my gosh, what do you think it ought to be? Like 15, 15,000? No, I think we, let's, let's try 17,500. The next two prospects that come to you, and I'm, it's not just a simple change of the, the website or whatever. Let's change it to a 90-day program. Even if it's the same thing, we'll stretch it out. We'll put in an extra call. We'll do this other thing. We did a little massaging, 17.5, 17.5. What do we do now? Let's go to 24.5. He's at 27.5 for essentially, and he sold like 10 since he started working with me. So what I, and the, the mindset thing that helped him get over the fact that, in addition, he doesn't mind getting $27,500 instead of 7500 you you base your fees on the transformation you're able to help your clients achieve. So if he helps a client increase his revenue from say a hundred thousand to one hundred eighty thousand, I said, so wait a minute, you help the guy go from a hundred to one hundred eighty. He's got an additional eighty thousand dollars in revenue from working with you. Yeah, so he gets eighty thousand new revenue and you get seventy five hundred. How's that? fair right so yeah. you gotta you gotta sometimes put it in those terms which is you know how i price how i base my stuff too so you you don't want to oh the number of calls you get blah 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 blah. no the transformation you're likely to get from working with me working with you etc you should base your fees on that that's and that, that's, that's some heavy mindset it's not hours it's not minutes mm. on zoom it is what is what is it worth it to them to get from point A to point B with your assistance? Because you put in the work, your expertise is backing you up. It's the whole uh, asking the electrician. He comes over and tells you what wire, right? You pay That's him a right. bunch of money for that. Same and goes he, for coaching. And Lindsay, you opened up our call saying, you know, coaches can tell you, um, you know, what to do. And it's the other side of that coin is what not to do. I think you actually alluded to that as well, because yes. so many people, some could trapped and and they're like yeah so it's not just the money and the income you're likely to help them achieve it's also this money they're going to keep because they don't do that <laughs> don't do that don't do that you know so because you know we've already stubbed our toes so why do you want to stub yours amen well i've narrowed down my success in the coaching business to be three things and we've already talked about two. The first is, of course, mindset. If you're going in with a, like, you have to be, you have to fortify your mind because it really is creating your reality and how you're interacting in your business. So mindset, we've talked about habits. You talked about, I have to wake up every morning and write this book and do these habits and these things every single day that will lead to a final result. And the third thing I actually want your input on right now, because I know you're a master marketer, is strategy. You've got to have good strategy in order to grow your coaching business. Now, Jim, you have a podcast. I know you're super consistent on YouTube. You host live events. You have great landing pages. You have email <laughs> newsletters. Like, what, what, what would you recommend? How do people grow a coaching business? Tell us, Jim. I'm, I'm going to tell you, but I'm first going to tell you the one word you need to excise from your, from your vocabulary. That word is just. In other words, well, I just have a small business or this, I think, or worse yet, when I tell people you got to do this, that, 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 and they're going to go, well, can I just do that? If you take out the word just, it's going to significantly increase your chances because that is a limiting thought. And it's also looking for the 
for the easy way out, right? So there is no easy way out. Um, it's interesting that um, early on in my career, I was at some big event, probably a Dan Kennedy event. And um, they were talking about, these two guys were talking about this other guy who was very, very successful. And he goes, the one guy said, almost like a smart ass, he goes, well, it's no wonder he's successful. Look at all he's doing. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's hey. the, they yeah. didn't put the two and two together there, right? Okay. Well, so yes. anyway, you know, what? one of the things that I, I, I teach and preach is what I call my million dollar platform. There are, it's all about content marketing, which drives the brand and the position you create for yourself and all the content that supports that. What's become, it's always been kind of my mantra or my belief, but what I, what I think is even more important today than ever before is, is a principle I call stay in your lane, right? Everybody feels like I, I need to share my opinion. You know, you turn, you, whether social, some form of social media or wherever, and it starts with the word rant. I, I will not, today, I not only don't read it, I will block them. They're no longer in my community because I have to protect my mindset. So everybody feels it's their duty to share what their beliefs are on, on any hot button topic. And yeah. you know what they all are, guns, religion, yep. abortion, whatever. Yep. There's all the biggies, day. taxes. Well, yeah, but I'm listen, I'm I'm really a business coach, but I want to tell you what I think is wrong. Well, you're alienating half your client base for one thing. And the second thing is your your whole wall, which a lot of people think, oh, if I can just get some activity or interaction on my wall, um, it's gonna be really good. But if if it blows up and half the people say you suck and half the people say you're wrong, you're good, or whatever, that does nothing for your brand. Sure. You look at all of my social media since I got online. You look at my blog, which has literally thousands of really good blog posts. And the, I did videos for five years. I'm, I'm, I'm on episode 570 of my podcast. I'm always talking about branding, positioning, marketing, you know, mindset. I'm all about being the dream business coach. Who the hell cares about what my opinion is on this, right? True. You know, the, yeah. so stay in your lane. You create the brand and you and you ride that hard. So, Lindsay, you know, when I do my my live uh, podcast Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern, and say, hey, it's Jim Palmer, the dream business coach. I mean, I can say that in my sleep and then I'll talk about and I, I'll have the same sign off until this time next week. Another fantastic interview. I am Captain Jim Palmer, the dream business coach. And you take I have the same thing. I've been doing it for years and years and years. And everything that I put out there also follows, which is kind of my latest book, and I'm sure you've seen it, but um, this used to be an ebook. Well, I had to turn it into a real book for a promotion I'm being part of, surf but first. it, That's it the title, really guys. is Sir First. Yeah, this was, I'll tell you about that in a second, but a little 50 page book. But um, it really is, I believe if you serve and serve and serve, you will earn the right to, to promote, number one, and earn the right to get the customers to give you money. Um, it's not a, it's not a, sir, Every if every every blog post you put out, if every time you you do something, you're you're pushing them to a seven dollar squeeze page item or something, that's not serving. Gary Vaynerchuk's great book. What was that? Um, something. Or, um... Right hook, right hook. No, no, that right hook was. The... <laughs> what? It was a boxing metaphor. I can't even think of the name of it. Just... But it was essentially that. You serve, 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 you give, you give, you give, you teach people, and they're going to want, enough people will want more of what you have. Yep. So, so from your decades of experience marketing, I'm going to, I'm going to make you narrow in on some, one of your okay. favorites here, Jim. Is it book, podcast, YouTube, social media, guesting? Yep. I, I hate to disappoint a host, but I cannot, I can't give you one, but I'll give you a very, very good answer. Okay, nothing, of course. nothing is as powerful as being in the front of the room or better yet on stage. You gain so much credibility when you are a speaker and kind of a quick sidebar, two types of speeches. One, we deliver a great thing and you get a round of applause and then, or the other type is my preferred way. You give a great speech and have people want to give you money in the back of the room. They're two different presentations, right? But anyway, the only thing that's better than being the speaker in the front of the room is being a published author speaking in front of the room. Those oh, two things will kill it. And by the way, doing your own live events, nothing. I tried to grow my, I tried to grow my um, coaching program from 2009 to 2014 
And I did okay. But when I started doing my live events, I did eight of them, literally sold millions of dollars of coaching in front of between 40 and 50 people at every event. It paid for my this lifestyle. Events, and they were awesome, well-positioned. I mean, yeah, you know how to host a live event there, Jim. And every, believe me, every single word, every action, every break, every poster on the wall, what the merch is on the table, the order of the speakers, everything is choreographed and, and well thought and, and out. I th and, and it was, and it's important that you take <clears throat> that also to online, right? What is what I'm saying? How, how does that coming across? Because it's as good as being what Jim said. I recommend you looking at everything in your marketing, just like Jim mentioned, because it yeah. matters. All of it matters. It matters. And you know what? So we did um, the last live event I did was literally uh, right before the pandemic hit. But I didn't miss a beat because I had already been online doing virtual things. Um, didn't affect Stephanie and I because we'd already been living together by ourselves on our boat for, you know, three years. So our life didn't change that much other than the towns we were in were completely desolate. But um, being online, it's definitely a great thing. That's why I'm, you know, even to this day, I'm still doing my live interviews on Wednesday. It gives me a chance to, first of all, meet somebody just like you and I are doing here, although we know each other, but to often a great chance to make a very good connection. But again, it's a chance to serve your audience. Whether there's two people, 20 people or 200 people that watch that interview, you're serving your audience. I can't tell you how many times I've had somebody say, um, I've been following you for a long time, Jim. You know, a long time. Oh, I remember here seeing you here. Remember this, or even somebody. Man, I've been following you for the last five years. Love your message. I'd love to talk. You just keep serving and serving. Stay in your lane. Build your brand. Stay true to who you are, and and you're going to attract the right type of clientele. I love it. Thank you, Jim. Okay, let's turn to something a little bit that's making me sad. When you say that you're on. The exit <laughs> ramp, or you're looking towards. I hate to hear that, Jim. But how are you feeling about it? Like, what? Can, can you just share some thoughts on that? I hate to see it. Um. Well, the one thing I definitely inherited from my mom is the inability to sit still. So I, I, I'm not a rock and chair guy. Believe me, this last year after we sold our boat and before we bought the motorhome, I was not fun to live with because I had nothing to do. Now I'm fixing, tinkering, you know, learning and. But the thing is, Lindsay, um, you know, when you work in a compressed time, like for those 12 years or so, I literally, I was the 80 hour a week guy. And then I said, I can't do this anymore. That's when I moved. I stopped doing coaching calls on Friday. Then I stopped doing them on Mondays. And it turns out I can still run my business and, uh, and, and facilitate my lifestyle on three days a week if I keep my coaching program full. And so that was possible. What I'm looking at most likely is going down to two days a week for a year. Um, and then I, I, I fully hope and pray that I'll be in the position when I can not turn everything off, but then I would love to work with five people that I truly love, admire, respect, and want to help. I mean, I like everybody that I work with, some better than others. I mean, sometimes we do things sure. as an owner to facilitate your cash flow or whatever. But if I got to a point where that's that's kind of the point we're getting to where the, the financial guy says, boom, you're done. You're ready to go do what you want. I don't want to stop working, but I want to be in a position that will be it where I can say, okay, I got I got five slots open. Who who wants to work with me for six months or a year? And it's going to be a great experience for both of us because it'll be like hand picked. Do you know what I mean? So I'm not going to disappear. I doubt I'll keep do going at the level I'm doing now. Um, and, you know, I tried to slow down a little more a couple of years ago. I know you're familiar with this story as well. And um, the, the good Lord said, no, you got more work to do. I want you to keep going, even at that measly pace you're working at now. And, um, and just so happens I, I interviewed somebody you know well, David Phelps, right? Used to be in our group. And uh, he did a book and it was, and one of the chat, and I actually read his book before I interviewed him and it was called Investing in Your Legacy. And it just got me thinking, legacy, hmm, I've got white hair in my face. I pr probably should start thinking about my legacy. <laughs> and, um, and it really bothered me because I wanted to, I, I feel like I've got a gift and I've helped a lot of people and I should want to help more people, but I don't want to work more than three days a week. 
And what I did is I started giving away all my books for free in digital. I figured out how to make your Kindle books zero cost, which Amazon won't let you do. I figured there's a little backdoor thing. I'll share it with you, but not on the air. Um, there's a little way you can do that. And um, so all my books on Kindle are free. They're on the iBook store and they're in Barnes and Noble as Nookbook. So people can get an education for free. They don't even have to get on my email list, nothing. So that was how I sort of checked that box, if you will. But I know um, I, I want to keep helping people, but I don't, I don't you know, and I won't need 20 or 25 clients. I'll just need five or I Makes want sense. to have, because, you know, I, Stephanie and I, for maybe two years, maybe three, we don't know. I'm going to drive that motor home all over this country and, and see the national parks and all the stuff. And, you know, D diesel still not 50 cents a gallon. So yeah. it, it wouldn't hurt to bring in at least diesel fuel and eating out money and, you know, leave the nest egg aside. I've never been that open with anybody, but you, you got me to talk about it. But that's that's kind of where we are now. Nothing's in stone. And, so, you know, you never know what the future holds, but that's what I'm looking at right now. And again, I've been work very, very hard to get to this point. And I, I don't want to be one of these people who uh, face plants on his desk, you know, waiting to, waiting to pull the parachute, so to speak. That's really inspiring that you've just taken your life and made it whatever you want, whatever you want. I love that. You only got one chance. And I always say you are on the main stage right now. This is not a dress rehearsal. Eventually the curtain will come down. You don't know if it'll be tomorrow or 10 years from now, but don't, when that curtain comes down, don't have any regrets. Yeah. You know, when we yeah. moved on that boat, the financial guy says, why don't you just wait one more year? And by the way, could you work four days a week for one more year? You'll be in so much better shape. To no, we're doing it now. We'll figure out a way. We're going to make it happen. We had the time of our lives, Lindsay, on that boat. I'm telling you, it was great fun. I, love I okay. miss it terribly. <laughs> no, I'm going to start. <laughs> Did you really have to oh. Cry over the oh, my goodness. <laughs> So looking back, my final question is this. So looking back over your career and where you are now, what is one thing you wish you would have known when you first started that you could share with us? I wish that I had known ahead of time two things, that I really am a good speaker because I had massive fear of public speaking. Almost literally, it's not one of those stories. Oh, I was, I was you know, born under a bridge and I discovered the magic world. That wasn't me. I almost didn't graduate high school because I was always absent the day it was my turn to read in front of history class and all that. And even in the early days of my career, I always found a way around it. But then, especially when I started writing books, I got these opportunities to speak and I knew it would be great. It's the secret to going from one to one marketing to one to one to many. So I got over that. I did a lot of things to get over it. And then it turns out I'm a really good speaker and people enjoy hearing me. So I wish I had connected those dots. And, and re the part B of that thing is I wish I had gotten over my fear of doing my own live events sooner because that's a, it's a massive undertaking in time and investment. Like you, you sign contracts that you're going to spend this much in the meeting room. You're going to buy this much in food and beverage. You have to guarantee at least a certain number of sleeping rooms. And if everybody goes to Motel 6 down the road, you're on the hook for there's a lot. And, and then the fact that what if everybody comes or what if everybody buys a ticket and nobody comes or you freeze or you don't sell anything. So it's yeah. a very big deal. Again, turns out my events were very popular. I did a good job. I worked really hard at them. So I wish those two things, if they had come sooner, well, we might not even be talking now because, yeah. but, you know, but those are two things, which absolutely goes again to mindset, to fear accepting who you are, get over yourself and, and, you know, plow forward and do the hard work. Thank you, Jim. Thank you so much for being so candid on this interview. It's so great to connect with you again. And I really appreciate every, you know, all the insight you've given me and how, how, how you've taught me over the years. So I really well, appreciate it. Well, I got a lot of respect for what you've done. I, I just think the world of you and Ian and your family, I'm always watching you from afar <laughs> and seeing all the great things you're doing. So it's really fun to uh, come on your program. Thank you. All right. I'm going to turn the time over to you. Tell us how to find you and anything else you want the audience to know, Jim. GetJimPalmer.com. GetJimPalmer.com. Everything kind of flows off of there. And um, that would be it. Awesome. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Lindsay. 
What a great episode of the Millionaire Maker Show. A big thank you again to Jim Palmer for joining me on the show and just really sharing his many, many decades worth of experience in how to build an online business and get to the end point where you've achieved it, okay? Where you have more time, more money, more freedom, more impact. You can travel around the globe in your RV or your yacht and do what you want and have that freedom while still making an impact. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. In fact, if you enjoyed today's episode, can I ask you to leave me a review out there on your favorite podcast platform? Let me know how you like The Millionaire Maker Show. Please leave me a review if you're enjoying this podcast, and I'll see you on the next episode. Thank you for listening to The Millionaire Maker Show with master business coach and creator of The Millionaire Maker Coaching Funnel, Lindsay Anderson. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.